Hello, in this video I actually have three problems. We're going to start with the first one, like it normally happens. Prove that there doesn't exist positive integers n such that n uh, 2 to the n divides n factorial. So first I'm going to rewrite 2 to the n divides n factorial as n factorial over 2 to the n. Now, if you know anything about p-adic uh, valuation, then that you can take v of 2 of n factorial and v of 2 of 2 to the n. Now this is just basically multiplying by 1 on both sides. But we're going to use some fancy tactics to figure out what this is. Now basically, in case you don't know what p-adic evaluation is, I'll uh, give you a little definition over here. So if p is a prime number and m is an integer, we define p-adic uh, evaluation of m as the greatest non-negative integer k, such that p of p to the k divides m, and we denote this as k equals v p of m. So basically, um, let's say v of 2 of 2, 2 to the something equals, or at, is as close to 2, so 2 to the 2 equals 2. And then if we have like um, v5 of 10, well, if we say 5 to the second, that goes over 10, so we just have to say 1, even though it's less than 10, that's our answer. We're just trying to get this integer value to be as close to when it's the x1 to this, to this. Uh, so just another example, v of 3, 20, v3 of 27, 3 to the third is 27, but also v3 of 28 is also going to be 3. Okay, now continuing on with the problem. Uh, you can just see, it's very clear to show that v2 of 2 to the n is just going to be equal to n. For example, if n equals 3, it will be v2 of 8 and... 2 to the third is equal to 8, which we said 3 is equal to n. So the answer, as you can see, is always just going to be n. That's very simple. Now we need to evaluate this. So you can use Legendre's, I think I probably messed that up, formula. It's like the second version. That's not so important though. Okay, here's what it says. Let P be a prime and let M equal AK PK plus AK minus one, P, K P to the K minus one, all the way up until A1, P to the first, plus a to the 0, and then p to the 0 is just 1, so we don't need to write that, okay? We're, that is going to be the, um, uh, the uh, base p expansion of m. So this will mean then that vp of m factorial is going to be equal to m minus the sum from base p of m uh, divided by p minus 1, where that is equal to, oops, is equal to ak all the way up to a0. Um, which that right there is the sum of digits of m this time in base in base p. Okay, so now we can use this and plug it into this over here, and we could um, we can say v. 2 of n factorial is equal to n minus s base 2 n over 1 and then we can just since that's equal to that and again because in this case 2 is the prime number so 2 minus 1 is 1 
uh, so we can just, since it's divided by 1, we could just put this over here, n minus the sum 2 of n, and now we need to show that this over here is not going to be a positive integer. And then I'm going to prove that is, so this sum right here is um, at most, or this whole sum right here is going to be at most, n minus 1, as in if this sum right here is just 1, which is the lowest value it can be, then that would maximize how big this is, but it's still 1 less than the denominator. And since the numerator, when it's its biggest it could possibly ever be, is still less than the denominator, it will never be a positive integer. So we have proved that this right here can never be a positive integer. Okay, now turn on the page. Moving on to our next problems. Okay. What is the exponent of 3 in the prime factorization of 28 times 29 times 30 all the way up to 100? So first I'm going to find um, the exponent of 3 in the prime factorization of 1 through 100. So first we're going to start with the numbers that have 1, 3 in its prime factorization. That's going to be... 100 divided by 3, so there are going to be 33 numbers that have 1, 3 in it. Now there are also going to be numbers like 9, uh, and etc. that have uh, 2, 3's in it. And that's going to happen, since the first number is 9, that's going to happen every 9 times. And so of course when we do this we're going to have to round down, so 100 divided by 9 is going to be... Uh, 11 point whatever, but we have to round down because the beginning, the starting values and the end values 100 are not divisible by 3, so again we're rounding down. Now there are also numbers like 27 that have every, um, that have 3, um, that's just 3 cubed, it has 3 factors of 3 in it. So we're going to find the number of that by dividing by 27, this is also 3 cubed, this is 3 squared. Uh, it's good to notice patterns like that. This again, when using the floor function basically, which means like round down to the integer, <laughs> is going to result in 3. And then when we divide by 81, we're going to get 1. And then if we do by the next one, we're going to get 0 as our answer. And 0s are going to keep on following, so we're just going to stop here. So between 1 and 100, we're going to have 33 plus 11 plus 3 plus 1, and that is going to equal to 44 plus 4. Okay, that right there is 48. Now we need to find the numbers of exponent 3 between 1 and 27. Okay, so again, this time we're going to have 27 divided by 3, which is 9, because this time we only have 27 numbers, unlike the 100 numbers. And then we're going to do... Uh, 27, 27 divided by 9, that gives us 3, and 27 divided by 27, that gives us 1, and if we continue on here, you're going to see that we're just going to get zeros because we're using the floor function. So this is going to be 9 plus 3 plus 1, that is equal to 13. So now we have 48 minus 13, 35. That is going to be our answer. So the exponent of the 3, the prime factorization, from uh, 28 times 29 all the way up to 100 is going to be 35. You might think that you could use Pascal's triangle in this. I find that this way works very well. Okay, last problem. How many zeros does the number um, 313 times 313 all the way up to 626 end in? Okay, so this problem right here might be a little, might appear to be a little tricky at the beginning. But we can use a very similar strategy. So in this case, if it ends in a 0, that's going to be v of 10. Uh, so we have v of 10 of 626. And we need to find out what this is equal to. Well, you could automatically just think, oh, well, that's 10 to the something was uh, 626. That's an easy answer. But this number right over here has to be prime. Must be prime. 
and that's in the definition of p-adic evaluation. So we're going to break this up into p of 2, of 626, and then v of 5, 626, or v2 of 626. So that this number right here is going to be greater than or equal to this divided by 2, which is 313. And this number right over here, sorry, what am I doing? There is going to be less numbers with 5 in the end than numbers with 2 in the end. So we only need to count the ones with 5 in the end because the ones with 2 in the end will definitely work. And so then all the 5s will be able to pair up with a 2 and create a 10, which will end in a 0. So we basically have, writing it in a more formal way, v5 of 625 is equal to 620, or 626, what am I saying, divided by 5 floor function, plus the floor function of 626 over 5 squared, which is 25. This is just a more formal way of writing this now. And then we have to add, add again when there are three of them is 125 and then the last one we're going to have is 625 because any more and the answer will just be zero so this right here uh, that's going to be 125 this right here 25 all this is just 5 times 125 is 625 and 25 squared is 625 and then this is just the inverse of this so it's going to be five and then this right here obviously one so v5 of 626 is going to be equal to 156 and now we know that there aren't any more than 156 because or any less because there are more twos just in the first round just choosing this for this the equivalent for the two there are more than the total multiples of five we get between all of these numbers multiplied together so we know that the twos are going to pair up with the fives, and that uh, if we did the other way around, there wouldn't be enough fives to match the twos. And since five times two is the only prime numbers they can multiply by to get a ten, this um, the v five will be our only <coughs> way to find the answer using this method. So the solution is going to be one hundred fifty six. Thank you much for watching. Or oh, wait, whoops, I totally messed up. Sorry. Um, this is between numbers 1 and 126. The answer to that is 156, okay? Oh, man, sorry guys. I led you off to probably thinking, wait, Ben, what are you doing? Now we need to find the zeros between 1 and 312 so that we could subtract that from 156. So between 1 and 312. So again, we're going to be using V5 because we know that V2 already covers it. V5 of 312, that is going to be 312 over 5 plus 312 over 25 floor functions plus, ah, sorry, the lighting, 312 over 125, and then the next multiple after 125, um, or the next multiple after 125 of 5 is 625, so I can include that. So this added up all together is going to be, um, I'm just going to, uh, it is going, uh, let's think, what's this going to be? Let's do it right here. 512 divided by 5, 6, carry the 1, we have 62, right? 62 times 5, yeah. So we have 62 plus, and then 25 divided by that, 312, 25, 1 minus 25. So now it's 62, that goes in 2 times, so it's plus 12 now. Let's double check my work. 25 times 12, 10, 50, plus 250, that gives me 300, that is correct. So 62, 12, and now that is only going to go in twice because 3 times is going to be way too much. So 62 plus 12, that is equal to 74, 
Now I need to do 156 minus 74. Um, that's going to be 282. That is, oh, whoops, I forgot to add on the two for here. That, the two from 132 over there, so it's going to be plus two. This is actually going to be 76. And then 156 minus 76 is just 80. So our final answer will actually be 80. Thank you for going through that big mumbo jumbo, big mess over there. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.